Okay, in this problem, we are going to show um, that this particular matrix is not diagonalizable. So there is no way to find a P uh, such that P inverse AP ends up being a diagonal matrix. Now, that might seem like that's somewhat difficult to do. You know, you might say, well, maybe you just chose the wrong P. Um, maybe it's something else. Um, but what we're going to show is regardless of what you end up coming up with for P, um, it will not diagonalize this matrix. So I'm going to start this uh, in the same way that I started the last example. I'm going to find um, the eigenvalues. And again, I'll subtract lambda off of the main diagonal and keep everything else the same and set that determinant equal to zero. Now, this is a triangular matrix, so the determinant is actually very easy to find. Uh, you just multiply the entries on the main diagonal together. So we can see, luckily, uh, in this one, uh, solving for the eigenvalues is pretty easy, um, that we get lambda equals 1 or lambda equals 2. Now, uh, I want to find the basis vectors for the eigenspaces for each one of these. So, um, what I'm going to do, because again, there's an eigenspace for um, each one of these eigenvalues, I'm going to start by putting in uh, lambda equals 1 and solving the homogeneous system uh, that would have that as its... Um, as its matrix. So I'll have 0, 0, 0, uh, 1, 1, 0, and negative 3, 5, 1. And again, it's a homogeneous system, so uh, I will augment that with zeros. So the first thing I will do is I'll switch rows 1 and 3. Remember, uh, for our REF, we want to have uh, any zero rows at the bottom. Uh, so that seems like the easiest thing to do. And then I'll do minus a third of row one, and that'll get a leading one um, right there. It will mean that I have some fractions that I have to deal with, but um, that's okay. You, can't, you could leave them as uh, integers all throughout and then divide at the end if you would prefer that. That actually may be computationally a little bit easier way to do this problem. Um, so I will do uh, row 2 minus row 1. That'll get a 0 right here, which is what I want. Um, it'll get an 8 thirds here, and it will get a um, one-third there. I believe that's right. Um, and so what I will do now is I will go ahead and multiply row uh, two by three-eighths just to get a leading one again. That'll be a one-eighth. And then to get it in RREF, I need to change that to a zero. Everything else uh, is satisfied uh, for that. So I will do row one plus five-thirds row two. Um, and that ought to get me, let's see, one, zero, minus a third, plus five-twenty-fourths, negative one-eighth. Now, from here, you can see that um, x3, the third component, is free. So I'll just go ahead and put a parameter in there, x3 equals t. The second equation becomes x2 uh, plus 1 eighth x3 is 0. So since x3 is equal to t, x2 is equal to minus 1 eighth t. And the first equation is x1 minus 1 eighth x3 is 0. And again, x3 is t, so x1 is 1 8 t. So if I were writing um, this eigenvector, what I would get is, uh, again, it's x1, x2, x3. 
And then I could put in 1 8 T, negative 1 8 T, and T. If I factor out the T, I get 1 8 negative 1 8 1. And so, um, you know, you have one eigen uh, vector right here, or one one basis for the eigens, one basis vector for the eigenspace. Um, if you had wanted to pull out t over eight, just so you didn't have any fractions, that's fine. Um, but again, this problem only we're we're looking at to show that this is not diagonalizable, so that's not as important for us. All right, um, let's go ahead and do the same thing for lambda equals two. So if I put in a two right up here, I'll get negative one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, and negative three, five, zero. Whoops, I forgot to augment that with zeros. Remember, we're solving the, um, the homogeneous system. And so, um, you know, I can just go ahead and do, I can change the sign on the first row. Um, that's pretty easy. And then I can do row two minus row one and row three plus three row one. Um, so this will be the same. The second one will be a row of all zeros. And then this will be zero, five, zero, zero. All right. Now I'm gonna do a couple of steps here at once. Um, I am going to multiply this last row by one fifth just to get a leading one there and I'm gonna switch rows two and three. Um, so I'm not writing this down, but there's a couple of steps rolled into one. Let me slide this up just a bit. Um, and I get that. Now again, X3 is uh, free again, so X3 is T, and the second equation is X2 is zero, so we don't have any uh, um, choice over x2, and the first one is actually x1 equals 0 also. So our eigenvector on this one is 0, 0, whatever our parameter is, and if I pull that out, I get 0, 0, 1. So notice that I have one basis vector for this eigenspace. Now, I alluded to this in the last uh, problem, that we had three basis vectors, which is what we needed because it was a three by three matrix, so we were good. Notice here, I only end up with two basis vectors. So I'm not gonna be able to fill out an entire uh, three by three uh, matrix because I only have two columns. And that's precisely um, what tells us that this particular matrix is not diagonalizable. Um, generally, if I were uh, writing up the solution, uh, I would probably summarize all of that, uh, you know, written at the end. But uh, since I'm just um, telling you this orally, then, uh, you know, I'll just use that as my explanation. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know.